Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amulan Sikhivel. And in this video, we're going to see how we can create the pay test. Previously, we have seen how we can create web. Also, we have seen how we can create mobile. And that, now this is time for creating a pay test, right? Uh, we're also going to create this in such a way. Let's say your web application is also depending upon these APIs. Then we could also uh, should be in a position to reuse these APIs in our web or mobile test. So it's very important to, to design your API list very perfectly. So that's why I keep it as last so that I can spend a little bit of extra time to manage them in a really good way, right? So without wasting much time, let's uh, move to IntelliJ. And, uh, you know, so basically I have created a class. Um, you know, if we go to the test layer, we have mobile here and then we have web test here. Uh, but for API, I have created a new package and then created a class called Rectress test. And uh, I'm going to basically use an application uh, here uh, that is Rectress. Basically, you can go to this request.in, uh, it's, it's a dummy website, which is gonna give you a bit of, uh, you know, when you hit some request, it's gonna give you some dummy response, we're gonna validate that, right? So it's going to be as simple as that. But for that, we need to, you know, put right things in the right place. Uh, first, we will do that. So first thing is we need to manage our, uh, you know, this uh, configuration, right? So it is very important. Sometimes you want to handle dev, uh, staging, you, you might have different environments, right? So so it is very important to handle them really well. Uh, so for that, we are al already using uh, something like, you know, uh, framework config where where basically we are, uh, you know, handling different environments like this, right? So for, for APIs, we could create a new uh, config class because for bro managing browser stack, we created separate config. For managing source labs, we created separate config. It's up to you, you know, if you can, you know, even create everything inside one uh, mapper class but you know it's it may not be really helpful for you to manage them really well so what i would suggest is uh, create a new uh, config class for for this mapping okay so what i can do is i create an interface and this basically going to be api config right so and then it's going to extend the config from the owner library and uh, i'm going to do a little bit of copy paste because i don't want to type all these things myself so so in this case um uh, I also want to pick it not from any of these, right? Uh, you can also have staging hyphen API config uh, properties, uh, development hyphen staging open properties. But in my uh, case, I'm just going to leave it as API hyphen config, right? So you can also have API hyphen staging hyphen config, API hyphen dev hyphen config. So up to you, right? So now we will go ahead and create the uh, resources. So let's basically copy the config dot properties, paste it, and then change it to API hyphen config, right? Yeah, so we don't want all these things. We want some some important things here. So that is first one is base URL. Um, so this is the API base URL, right? So that is request.in here. So you can copy this and then put it here, right? And then apart from that, we also need to, we are going to validate this API. So we need this endpoint. See, normally most people will prefer uh, maintaining the API endpoints inside the uh, classes as a static constraints. That is also good, <coughs> good approach. You can also do that. But in my case, first, you know, most of the developers used to maintain all this configuration uh, inside the property. The reason being, you can deploy stuffs. You can change all these things without de deploying the code. You can just change the property files and everything will be all set you don't have to compile the code right but in case of test automation it's okay right you can create it inside classes because anyways it's, it's just test automation code right we are go not going to deploy anything so even if you're going to recompile that's fine in my opinion so so you can also put it in the uh static constants okay in, inside a class but first let me uh you know do it like how conventionally developers would do it so that you can get a good understanding right so this is an endpoint uh, so basically We'll copy this. Uh, this is list users endpoint, right? So you can have list users endpoint, and then you can have something like this. And then now, if you want to add query parameters here, I wouldn't recommend doing the, you know, adding the query parameters and all here because that might be uh, not good. So you can add query parameters inside the code. So we just look for the endpoints here, right? Nothing else. So let's go here, and then we simply say string base uh, URL, and then it should basically uh, 
so you can you can also name it as api base url because you don't have to get confused um and then i go here and then uh, this is the key here i come to api config add the rate key you can put like this so it basically goes and finds the base url and map it to this right so very simple uh, let's say in case of multiple environments you can also add environment dollar dot base url but yeah so i have already covered that in the website so please do watch uh, the first few videos if you don't understand how to manage multiple environments right uh, in order to save time <coughs> i'm not going to show all that now right and then next one is free um, list users in point right so this is what we want and this is basically right so you can you can have something like this right so now you have this ready so you can have a, a factory class to to call this anywhere in the code so i go here um to the config factory um I copy this co config factory, paste it again. I name it as API config factory. We add, uh, and then I simply say API config. I should return API config here, and then I should say API config here. So now everything is set. So if I have to use this in my code, let's go to the test, and then let's write uh, rest assured uh, dot given, right? So given dot uh, so the base URI, I need the base URI, so I can say private static, so it's static, final string, let's put it as base underscore URL, I put API config factory, right, so dot get config dot API, right, so similarly, So let's duplicate this and then let's add get list users endpoint right and i simply say list underscore users underscore endpoint right so so yeah now all set uh, i can say base url and then i simply say uh, hit and then i can simply say list list users endpoint right and here the problem is I need to add query parameters. I can say uh, dots query params. Uh, what is the query param? The page is the query param and the value is two, right? So page comma two, right? First let's check whether this is working, okay? So I simply say dot pretty print, right? Uh, we don't want to do any assertions now. Uh, for now, we want to make sure that this works. Let's run it and see. So I use JUnit, you can also use testing it's up to you. Guys, this is not a final code, so don't complain. So we will move this, abstract this away to a separate class, okay? So if you notice, we got the response. So everything is working fine. So now the problem here is the test basically should only show the, the intention of your test, okay? Uh, the, but here it is the implementation, how you are making the get call. It's basically an implementation. It's not the intention here, right? Uh, let's also open a test from our web, okay, our mobile. Let's open mobile test, okay. Here we are saying, hey, uh, navigate to view screen, click on this. So these are all intentions. My, uh, the user intentions, how this test should behave. They, they don't have any implementation like how I am doing the clicking, how I am doing the, you know, how I am waiting for the element. All these implementations are abstracted away to page layers. Similarly, I should only have intentions here. So the intention here is to make, make a api call and and get the response right so that's that's going to be our intention so how we can abstract away this logic okay let's let's create uh, a, a package called as uh, or we can directly give api class and then we simply say api dot which means it will automatically create the package okay and then we can say uh, request api layer or service layer you could name it anything like you could also name it a service layer uh, or request request layer or whatever but for me uh, api is much convenient so i use this uh, so what i'm going to do here so i'm going to abstract away all this logic so let's move all this logic okay 
and uh, let's also copy this. This is all should not be here, right? Let's, let's copy this and paste it here. Uh, obviously, I need to create a method. Let me name it as public uh, static uh, response. It should at the end it should re return the response. So get users, right? So so now I can put all these things here, and then instead of pretty print, I rather do return, right? So now we we abstracted away most of the logic here. So you could also name it as final so that you know nobody you know, extends this unnecessarily. So you can also make this as a private uh, constructor. So no one will create an object for this. So now everything looks fine. Um, let's go to the test and then let's try to call it. So request API. So request API dot get users. So this is the intention here. So what I want, we want the response from it. Once we got the response, we can perform assertion. So this is how it is, right? So so we show the intention here and then we want to do the assertion. We'll continue with the assertion in the next video. But in this video, we will try to understand here. If you notice this base URL, it's not just the base URL for this, right? Uh, for the request API. Let's say I have one more API class, then I have to repeat it there. So, and also this whole stuff, uh, base URI, rest issue dot given, most of them uh, were, were basically constants. Even if in case of real website, you also have authentication. So in all those cases, it makes complete sense for you to have a class something like uh, base API, whatever, right? So base request specification, whatever. So we can have something like this, spec specifications. And then uh, it's gonna have final uh, private constructor, uh, public static. If somebody is going to ask me, uh, so request specification, okay. I'm gonna give them request specification, uh, get base. So it's it's a kind of default. Right? So we can also name it as get default request spec, whatever, right? And we simply return. We we cut this, and then we go there. Uh, we put it here. Okay. And then we can simply say test assured dot given dot base URI, right? These are all very common things, right? So even if you have some kind of authentication, you can perform it here so that, uh, you know, all these things are sitting here. So, and then what else we could do? Uh, that's it. So we cannot do any, any other things, right? So other things are very common. So, so let's remove this from here and let's go and uh, just return this. For now, but in real world, it would also have uh, assertions. If you want to set some default things, like uh, if you want to put some log dot all, you can also put it here. So all these things you can you can basically uh, set up here, right? Uh, and now you come here, your text looks much clean. But instead of using this, you simply say uh, base request specification dot get default request spec. That's it. So now you can have the battle control here, right? Okay, now let's try to check if everything is working fine. Response start, uh, status code. I can assert this. So what I can do is uh, assertions. So I can say this is int actual status code. Okay, and I can simply say assertion start. So this is coming from JUnit, uh, which I don't want. I want from the assert j so i use that and then assert that actual status code is equal to 200 right so what we want let's say in case of failure it will normally say it's you know, like you can also add your with fail message if you want to but in this case i don't think i need it so let's try to run and check if things working fine So guys, the reason why we abstracted this away is, let's say in your web test, you also need to reuse this API, okay? You, maybe you are getting some of the values from here, and then, you know, I uh, let's say whatever the response that comes here, you want to fetch one value and use it in your web test case, okay? You can 
this way you can reutilize them, right? If you put everything here, you cannot reuse it. So that's that's the main problem. And also, if you notice, the test should be always following the AAA pattern, arrange, act, and assert. In this case, um, we we are not arranging a lot of things because uh, you know in case of post we might arrange the test data, but here we are just directly doing um, action and then we are doing the assertion here. So that's how easy it is to write a test case, right? So uh, in the next video we will try to cover a few more topics where how we should manage our request bodies, how we can assert a large longer responses, how we can perform deserialization and stuff like that. Uh, I hope this video will be useful to you. If it is, please do share this with your friends, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys in another great video. Ta